The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 632 Annoying Bottle Griffins <sighs> Vlay hauled herself more upright in the fountain, water streaming from her mane and fur. Whatever it is, I'm not interested. Leave me alone, Kiro. Kiro tilted his head so far sideways it was horizontal, blinking once, and giving her an avian stare. I have no idea what kind of business you're indulging yourself in, he tweeted, though it does look very fanciful. Unfortunately for you, it is my business for you to be hearing what I have to say. Regrettably regrettable. You are listening? Bananas! Avalay punched the inside of the fountain, sending water sloshing over the rim. Could you at least not talk like that? Look, I remember that will you left in Iron Ridge. It was all immaculate and broody and not, like, I know you know how words work. Kiro gave her a blank look and blinked once more. Mm hmm. I see. <sighs> Valley splashed a moment longer, standing up and glaring. In case you forgot, you ordered your mercenary dudes to kill me, yeah? There was them I was beating up in the tunnels, and then you bailed the moment I got away and left them stranded in Einrich? Maybe remember that a little? What kind of point would you like to be making, Kiro chirped, very clueless. I... Ugh! Valet applied a sopping hoof to her face and groaned. I have a warning for you, Kira informed her, sounding ridiculously proud of himself. I'm thinking you'd like to hear it. Somewhere more private we should be going, no? Look, buddy, I was in this fountain for a reason. Kiro waggled a talon, his stupidly prim bow tie fluttering in the breeze. This fountain will still be being here when you return, but my business is taking too long already. Please hurry yourself along, now, now. Vale gave him an evil look, finally realizing a cause worth getting out of the fountain. Carefully, she hauled herself over the rim, pouring more water than a faucet, coat completely slicked down, and lowered her head and shook as hard as she could, emptying what felt like gallons into Kero's suit and face. The bird squawked in dismay, shielding himself with a wing, and Vale bared her teeth in a grin when she was done. Yeah, you like that? She finished by blowing a raspberry. All right, get on with your business, but I'm in a really bad mood with a lot of unspent aggression, so you better not remind me of the time you try to kill me. Kiro shook himself in return, but it was utterly futile. Anywhere in private will do, he mumbled, crest drooping as he trundled away. Valet followed him out of the plaza and around a corner, ending on a windowless strip of concrete behind the hospital before the hill fell away in a grassy slope. Here ought to do, yes, it ought to do nicely, Kero sang to himself, spinning in circles three times and fixing Valet with his eyes. Hedmer Valet of Einridge. His gaze was returned with a glare. Make this quick, Valet demanded. My mercenary company, Kero quietly told her, speaking in hushed tones has returned to my service from Iron Ridge. Wait, there! Uh, Valet furrowed her brow, leaning in and lowering her voice as well. Here? In his valley? Oh no, they're already out on an assignment. Very important business. Uh, Kiro mumbled something else about business to himself, clicking his beak. Very, very important, hmm, yes. Valet waited for the other boot to drop, but it didn't come. Hmm, business about hunting me again? That is not what they are doing, Kiro rebuked as airily as ever. I work for Chauncey. They are on a mission from him north of Gyre and Wilderwind. Their doings are being done in Misvale. Valet raised an eyebrow. Yeah? What of it? For a moment, Kiro watched her and then hung his head. Chauncey is blackmailing me, he apologized, the first tone of legitimate emotion aside from confusion, excitement, and surprise entering his voice. I have a loved one. You know how it is. But I frowned a moment longer. That's rough, buddy. It is why I must carry out tasks even I do not want anywhere near my business, Kiro continued, hanging his head profusely, such as disseminating obsidian to the mothers of my company's android foals or seeking after your capture. Wait a second, Chauncey ordered you to hunt? Valet's eyes widened in shock. 
Very fortunately, that needn't be our business, Kira wheedled, realizing he had made a mistake in trying to change the subject. You see, my company is presently in bananas, it's none of my business! Vully grabbed his collar before he could move and slammed him against the ground on his back, dripping water on his suit and face. How did he know about me? What did he know about me? And why did he want me gone? Kiro squirmed. Help! Mercy! Aha! Like the mercy you showed me? Vully forced him to meet her eyes, hard and cold and reflecting memories of a life and death struggle in the Flame District Tunnels. Oh, the mercy you showed your mercenaries when you left them to mine? Tell me! He didn't specify... specifically... Kiro gurgled under the pressure on his throat, and Vully slackened off enough that he could talk. It was your brand. All throughout our travels, we've been instructed to keep an eye out for a pony whose brand could see the future. We were told there would be a child, someone reconstituted using obsidian during pregnancy. Vully's eyes widened more. What? I don't know why. Please! Uh, Kiro squirmed. Oh, how Chauncey knew to expect something like that? I still don't know if you're what he wanted, or if we were off the mark entirely since you're a Cerosian and not a foal from Obsidian. So, you mean, that nutcase was searching Moonglass for... Vully bared her teeth. Those answers aren't good enough! Kiro stared unblinkingly at her in terror. I'm telling you, I do not know how or why. I observed you for years between visits to Anridge, not wanting to admit it was true since it would mean my mercenaries needed to defeat you. I only moved because Anridge was changing and you could die or leave and it would be too late. Yeah? But what's so special about this picture on my butt, Fully snarled. So you know what it does. Big whoop, I can predict attacks before my enemies make them. What's it to him? I'm not knowing, Kiro whimpered. I cannot know what Chauncey is thinking, only what he asks. This is why I tried to come and warn you. Vully took a deep breath, closed her eyes, and stood up, ready to pounce again the moment Kiro bolted. What are you warning me of? Kiro trembled for a minute before speaking. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Monk Lord Yanavan? Pretend I haven't, and enlighten me. It was an incident in Mistvale several decades ago. Terrible business, Kiro lamented. One of the highest monks in the land turned traitor and attacked the Night Mother's most secret council, unprovoked and without warning. He stole a set of powers known as the Nightmare Modules they were tasked with guarding before being somehow sealed away. Chauncey had some experiment he was using to try to extract or rediscover Nightmare Modules on his own, but seems to have lost a key component to running it. But he wants these powers, and has tasked me with the sending of my group to discover this Yenavan and bring him back to his Valdi. Valet chewed her lip. Okay, that's pretty suspicious, but it's really just making me care for neither of you, which is how things were in the first place. Why do I care? I do not like Chauncey, Kiro mourned, but I cannot raise a wing against him directly. I'm telling you this in the hope you will beat my mercenaries to discovering the resting place of Yanavan and take these powers for yourselves, placing them further out of Chauncey's reach. This is my warning to you. The lady scrutinized them heavily and sighed. Well, that stinks. And your dudes can actually find some scary traitor who's been sealed away for decades? Kiro weakly shrugged. Do not be underestimating the resourcefulness of my mercenaries. It is bad for business. Yeah, I'm gonna need to talk with my friends about a whole bunch of everything. You? Vlade jabbed a hoof into Kiro's chest, earning a whiz. Stop being shady. Go, like, buy a farm or something, and leave everyone alone. You're sparing me? Kiro meekly whispered. Killing dudes isn't my style, Valet replied, turning and walking away. After all, I left your mooks off the hook too once. Please, don't make me regret trying it again. End of chapter 632